Tēnā koutou katoa, nau mā hāre mā ki tēnei wahi o Adelaide Christian Centre, e te ingo tapi o ihu karaiti, tēnā rakoutou, tēnā rakoutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Good morning everybody, welcome to Adelaide Christian Centre, we are the Walkers and we would love to lead you in praise and worship. and more. This healing, deliverance, salvation and more. The river is poured out for one and for all. So come to the river and drink from the water of life. Because you're a mighty God. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God. You're a healing God. You're a sovereign God. Oh, 
choice in the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. The Lord. I'm trading my sorrow. Oh, oh, oh. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. Laying it down. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, yeah. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. We say, yes, we are, Lord. I say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Back to the top, I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, yeah. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I say yes, we are Lord. I say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. One more time, I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Okay, now we're gonna do a little dance, and it goes like this. Sha la 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 la. Sha la 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 la. Sha la 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 la. Amen. Let's go again. Sha la 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 la. Okay, now your turn. Come on, get out of your rocking chair. Amen. One more time. Come on, get up off the couch. Shalala. Because you have turned our morning to dark. You have turned my morning into dancing. You have turned my sorrow into joy. Good morning everyone. My name is Rachelle and I recently returned from India and I'm based in Papua New Guinea. So it's good to be here with you all this morning um, as we focus on the nations and the peoples of the world this Sunday, this Mission Sunday. Especially at this time as so many people around the world are uh, affected by this current pandemic that we're going through. But um, I'm remembering a comment that a lady made to me, an old Hindu lady, one time in India some years ago, and she said this thing to me that Jesus died for the Christians. And I've never forgotten that comment that she made because many thousands of people in many nations think like that, that Jesus is only for the Christians and he only died for the Christians. But the Bible tells us 
in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the Bible teaches us that our, our own goodness and righteousness cannot save us or put us in favour with God. Every human being that is born into the world is born into sin. And God is the one who provided the only person who was sinless and set apart from sinners, his only son, Jesus. And 1 John chapter 2, verse 2 tells us that he himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sin. And not only for us, but also for the sins of the whole world. The most essential thing that people need to be set free from is sin. Jesus came to give his life for the forgiveness of sin. Jesus provided forgiveness of sin for all peoples, for all nations. He himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sin, and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. And this morning as we take this, uh, if these elements, this juice and this bread together, let's thank Jesus that he gave his life for all peoples, all nations, and, and be thankful for what he did at the cross, for the forgiveness of sin and for the sins of the world. He took them on himself at Calvary. And may we always be thankful for that and never forget what he did. And this is a reminder of his broken body and his blood that was shed at Calvary's cross for you and me. Hallelujah. Let's just take these elements now. Thank you, Father. Let's just pray this morning. Father, we want to say thank you so much for sending Jesus the Son to give your life for all the nations of the world, for all the peoples of the world. That there is no more sacrifice left because you were the perfect sinless sacrifice, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And Father, we thank you that in heaven there will be, standing before the throne, every people from every tribe and tongue and language and nation that will be giving glory to you. We thank you, Lord, that we as believers have Christ in us, the hope of glory, and so we thank you, Lord, that you gave your life, not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the world. And so we thank you for that this morning. And we thank you for what you did at Calvary. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your blood shed for me, my hope, eternity. Your grace show to me gives me life and now I see your broken body.
everybody welcome to church i trust that you enjoyed the worship this morning and you also enjoyed the communion message uh, by rachel hardy uh, our missionary that is serving in papua new guinea but at the moment she's here in australia waiting to get back to png hope you also enjoyed the song from the jordan ministry from the church over there in orange in new south wales and uh, it's great to have them along today it is mission sunday and we've got a particular flavor today where we're going to be focusing on indigenous ministry i'm going to share some announcements with you now and uh, trust that you can uh, follow along our main Sturt Street News is now available online. You can download the Sturt Street News and you can look at all the various articles in there and in particular all of our missions uh, pages where we highlight the people that we support and the various ministries that we support around the globe, including our Indigenous ministries in Tennant Creek in Northern Territory and also in Orange, New South Wales. Our Connect Group resource page every Tuesday afternoon around about five o'clock we'll upload the teaching uh, video and also the notes that go along with that and uh, if you're a part of an online connect group you know the drill download that look through the notes if you're not a part of a connect group then you can also do this and do it as a personal study uh, for yourself and hope that you would enjoy that if you're on Instagram I encourage you to follow our new Instagram page. Michaela and Shekinah are doing a fantastic job putting that together. It's quite informative. I'm not really into Instagram that much, but I'm following. And so I encourage you right now, if you're on your phone or your tablet, why don't you follow us on Instagram, Adelaide Christian Centre. That'd be fantastic if you could do that. Our weekend services next Saturday on Channel 44 at 10 a.m. Just for a half an hour, you can watch there on the TV or you can watch their live streaming at the same time through their webpage at 10 a.m. Our Sunday service is normal at 10 a.m. and uh, next Sunday we have Mother's Day. It's going to be a special Mother's Day service and we've got an all guys band and it should be fun so tune in for that as well. In regards to giving, it is Mission Sunday, so we encourage you to give your missions offering to the details up on the screen, or you can go on to our webpage, and the Give page there has all the various uh, ways that you can give. If you're given towards missions, can you highlight the various ministry or person you want to allocate your missions offering to, just so that we know in the office? Also, you can give to Adelaide City Care as well. If you have your church app, on your phone why don't you open that up in a moment because we're going to come about god's word if you haven't got the church app then you can download that and you can follow along with the notes in regards to what we're sharing they're the announcements and i'm going to share god's word with us today it is mission sunday and um, i want to be able just to minister 
uh, the Word of God to you. Before we do that, we're going to hear from Shane Reed, a.k.a. Skippy Reed, uh, from the Jordan Ministry in Orange, New South Wales. He's going to share a little bit about the Jordan Ministry. And then we have Pastor Elijah Umi Umi from Papua New Guinea, who's in Tanner Creek. In fact, he's stuck in Tanner Creek. We can't get him home. He's only meant to be there for two months, but he's there for a little bit longer. And he's got a little testimony to share about what he has been doing in Tanner Creek. So sit back, relax, and enjoy these two uh, young men as they share about their experience. Pastor Shane Reedy from the Indigenous Church in Orange, New South Wales. I believe God called us to ministry in the late 2018 and uh, thus far yeah, it's been a, um, been a great journey having its tests and trials along the way and um, you know we started off in a little community hall over in Glenroy and we've had about four to ten people attending and um, and right up to now we have 35 to 50 members and it's been great and God's grown the church and and along that way and in between those times we've um, touched base with Pastor Mike and Kelly Grew from S South Australia. Mike is the uh, senior pastor over there and, um, and we've been talking and we've joined up with Mike and Kelly and and the team over there and the rest of the guys around CRC ministry movement in Australia and international. Uh, it's been a great journey and I believe that God has just grown us and, and the way that things are happening so fast here in Orange is, is fantastic and, and God's just doing what, he's, what, what he always wants us to do is reach the people, reach the lost and, um, and we're the willing vessels for him here in Orange and we just want to give him all the glory, honour and praise because it's all about Jesus. And that's just a little bit about what the Jordan Ministry is doing here in Orange. We do have uh, church services every Sunday. We have also have um, Bible studies and prayer meetings. And, and look, we have a youth group as well, and it's fantastic. And everything's going well, and we know that God will grow his church. And um, because Jesus said, he said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And um, we believe those words and we receive them from the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's just a little bit about the Jordan ministry in Orange. And I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Elijah. I am from Papua New Guinea. I have been here in Tennant Creek for... Uh, for two months, supposed to be two months, but I'm uh, here for four months now. And uh, I have been uh, working with the uh, uh, Tenant Creek Christian Family Church. Uh, visiting uh, people in their homes and uh, having uh, Bible studies with them every week. And also uh, uh, follow up people, visiting them, praying for them, as well as uh, doing uh, uh, meals on wheels. And um, so that's uh, basically what I have been doing here. And uh, I am enjoying myself here in uh, Tenant Creek, though it's uh, hot and flies and all that but uh, it's been wonderful <laughs> and uh, uh, every everyone here is uh, uh, everyone here really look after me very well and uh, thank you taking care of me and so I'm enjoying my time here in Tenant Creek even though uh, this uh, uh, coronavirus thing has shut down and I couldn't get uh, to where I supposed to go, and but uh, everything is uh, good here. I am enjoying, and uh, uh, but I want to say thank you, thank you to uh, uh, everyone in uh, uh, Adelaide Christian Centre. Uh, thank you very much for praying for me, and also uh, thank you very much for the support that you have been giving. And I want to say thank you to all of you down at uh, Adelaide at Christian Centre. Thank you very much. God bless you all.
This morning I want to share from 2 Kings chapter 13. I've entitled this message, Shoot the Arrow, and it's for today being Mission Sunday. I hope you enjoyed the testimonies from Skip and also Pastor Elijah. In February 2017, I was seeking the Lord in regards to our missions program as a church and trying to work out how successful, if that is the right word or phrase, but how, how are we going in regards to the Great Commission? Now, the Great Commission, we know, is from Mark chapter 16, and it says, Go into all the world and to preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. This is the Great Commission. This is what we're all about, to share the love of Jesus to those that do not know him. And I was reflecting upon this and thinking about the various countries we're involved in, what we're doing around about our city here in Adelaide and what we're doing in the nation of Australia. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says that we will, be, uh, we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And when we have the Holy Spirit upon us, we will be effective witnesses to talk about Jesus. But then in that verse says, in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the other parts of the world. Now one thing I want to just share with us briefly is this. is coming from that particular verse, it is so important for us to be able to understand Acts 1 verse 8 so that we are effective witnesses in fulfilling the Great Commission, individually and corporately as a church. For us to be effective witnesses, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus needed the power of the Holy Spirit, as Luke chapter 4 tells us, verse 4 and verse 14 in particular, that after he came back from this time of, of uh, temptation in the wilderness, time of fasting where the, the enemy tempted him here and tempted him there, he came back, and the Bible says in Luke 4, that he came back empowered, full of the Holy Spirit. We also know that Jesus told the disciples to wait until the Holy Spirit come upon them before they set out to continue to do what God called them to do, to proclaim the message of Jesus and the resurrection of Christ and the need for people to adhere their lives and come to him. In fact, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 is the fulfillment of that when the Holy Spirit had come upon them in the upper room. So, how much... Do we need to have the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to be effective witnesses? Jesus needed the Holy Spirit. The disciples needed the Holy Spirit to be effective witnesses, and so do we. But where do we witness? In Acts 1 verse 8, it says in Jerusalem. Now, our Jerusalem is our Adelaide region. And then it says, then in Judea and Samaria. What is that for us? That is the, the region in South Australia, our state, and beyond that in our country, and then the other parts of the world, which is beyond the shores of Australia. Now, interestingly, in this verse in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, in our Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and the other parts of the world. Now, what we need to understand here is that there's three areas of outreach that we can be a part of as a local church. Local outreach, national outreach, and international outreach. Now, we don't just do one of them, and it's not as though we have a choice to do A, B, or C. This Bible verse says that we go to our local outreach and national and international. So we do all those three at once. Reaching our Jerusalem, reaching our regions, reaching our country, and reaching the other parts of the world. We reach our local Jerusalem, our local outreach through Adelaide City Care is a fantastic ministry that we have. We do that also through our activities and Sunday services here at church. And we also do it through our personal witness. We shouldn't wait for the church to put on an evangelistic program to witness to people that need to hear about Jesus. We should personally be doing that because we're ambassadors of the Lord. Now our region beyond us, our Judea and Samaria and the nation of Australia, we have chosen that we want to invest into indigenous ministries. And we're doing that through the church in Tenner Creek, Tenner Creek Christian Family Church, and they are merging into us so that we will become one church in two locations, even though it's in a different state. And we're also pursuing this now with the Jordan Ministry in Orange and New South Wales through Pastor Skip and his lovely wife Donna and the team there. So the Jordan Ministry Indigenous Church and the Tenner Creek Indigenous Church emerging in us and so we're just going to be one big happy church one big happy family although we're going to be ministering in three different states that's our judea and that's our samaria 
And as a church, if you've been a part of us for any given time now, you would know that we have an extensive ministry in the fields beyond Australia. I wanted to share that because it's important to understand that. That whilst we reach out locally, we're also reaching out nationally and also internationally. And before I move on, Adelaide Christian Schools is a ministry of this church and has been for the late se- since the late 70s. Now we have schools here in Adelaide, we have schools in our Judea and Samaria, being Narracourt, Wyala, up in Queensland, Discovery Christian College, but we also have schools beyond these shores in Papua New Guinea and in South Carolina and US of A. So our ministry for Adelaide Christian Schools is also replicated in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. So there's just a little bit of an update of how I was looking at missions back in February 2017 and how we will pursue and accomplish what we can in the Great Commission and extending God's kingdom. Now as I was reflecting about all of this, the Lord led me to this passage of scripture and this Old Testament story in 2 Kings chapter 13. And we're going to look at this. Now a little bit of background here. King Jehoash, the king of Uh, Israel was threatened by the king of Judah that they were going to invade them but what King Jehoash had on his side was that he had the prophet Elisha now Elisha was near the end of his life and he was old and he was sick in bed and this gave comfort to Jehoash in the sense knowing that God was on his side because of the prophet Elisha but it did make him worry about what would happen when Elisha passed on Did that represent that God would not protect them anymore? Anyway, let's pick up the story here in verse 14. It says, Sometime before the death of King Jehoash, Elisha the prophet was very sick and about to die. Jehoash went in and stood beside him at his bedside crying, and he said, Master, what will Israel's chariots and cavalry be able to do without you? Now, no doubt he was concerned. He was concerned about this. And then, Elisha said to him, grab a bow and some arrows, Elisha told him, and hold them in your hand. Jehoash grabbed the bow and arrows and he held them. Then Elisha placed his hand on the king's hand and said, open the window facing east. When it was open, Elisha shouted, now shoot. Jehoash shot an arrow and Elisha said, that arrow is a sign that the Lord will help you. Completely defeat the Syrian army at Aflac. Elisha said, pick up the arrows and hit the ground with them. Jehoash grabbed the arrows and hit the ground three times and then stopped. And then the prophet Elisha gave this unexpected rebuke. Elisha became angry with the king and exclaimed, if you had struck it five or six times, you would have completely wiped out the Syrians. Now you will defeat them only three times. And then abruptly... Elisha died and was buried. Now, it's an interesting story, but the Lord revealed some things to me at this time in regards to our mission's activity and involvement. But how could Elisha's future be so affected by how many times he hit the arrows on the ground? Think about that. He had no idea how many times he should hit the arrows on the ground. In fact, Elisha didn't even tell him how many times. What was the difference between striking the arrows three times compared to five or six times? Who would know? But Elisha instructed him to strike the ground, but he didn't say how many times. Elisha began with a promise of complete victory when he said that arrow is a sign that the Lord will help you completely defeat the Syrian army. However, Jehoash would receive much less. Now you will only defeat them three times he would receive much less than what was originally promised. The difference between a complete victory and a partial victory was Jehoash's choice in how many times he would strike the ground with the arrows. And this revealed to Elisha that Jehoash lacked determination to receive the full measure of God's provision that God intended for him. You see, obviously... Elisha wanted him to keep hammering those arrows on the ground. And this was a choice that Jehoash had to make how many times he was going to do it. So to put this another way, Jehoash quit too early and his complete victory was lost. Now that's a very simple story and I've glossed over it very quickly. 
But it raises a question. What does this story have to do with our involvement in the Great Commission as a church? Again here, Elisha said that he placed his hand on the king's hand. That arrow is a sign that the Lord will help you. That's so important for us because it speaks about a partnership that the Lord has had with this church many, for many years now. In fact, for many years, God called or shot our church out into this nation in Australia to plant churches all around in every state. Our church is going to be 75 years young in November this year. And this is the first church of our movement here in Australia, CRC Churches International, or some would know it as the CRC or Christian Revival Crusade. This church represents an apostolic calling of church planting. But through primarily the ministry of Pastor Barry and Rosalie Silverback, who went out into Papua New Guinea as missionaries from this church in the mid-60s, we now have an international movement across many countries. You see, God used us as a church and he shot us out into not only this nation, but the nations beyond of Australia. And he put his hand on us in partnership. And he helped us. This is a partnership between us as a church and who God is as the head of our church. And in partnership, we've been able to accomplish so much to date. But we can't live on our past accomplishments. We've got to think about the 75 years that are before us. So a challenge to us is if you had struck it five or six times, you would completely wipe out the Syrians. Jehoash quit early and didn't receive everything that the Lord had for him. Our challenge is this, very simply, in regards to missions and fulfilling the Great Commission as a church, is that we should not give up reaching new frontiers to extend God's kingdom. We should never stop striking the arrows of giving, sending and visiting. We should never stop going out into the mission field. We should never stop sending our finances. We should never stop sending people and visiting because we have a responsibility and a calling upon our life. It's a part of our DNA as a church and it has been for at least 70 odd years and I praise God and hope that it will be for the next 70 plus years as well. And as a church, we have a responsibility to fulfill our destiny in this area of local outreach, national outreach and international outreach so that we can reach as many people for the gospel, for the extension of God's kingdom. We will do this through Christian education, through sending missionaries out in the world, to plant churches wherever we can, to support local churches, to teach the word of God and through ministry training, through visiting, through giving and through praying. Because God has called us to be a church that is beyond ourselves for those around about. I mentioned Pastor Barry Silverback a little while back. And I remember he preached once about the seven reasons or the seven purposes a church should be involved in world missions. And he commenced that sermon with this, where he talked about two mentalities of a local church. The first one here is a radic mentality, which is all about out from the center. The church comes together to worship the Lord for the purpose of the Great Commission. So we come together to go out and to reach the world. And then the other one, attitude is the centric mentality which is all about us within the four walls we live in our christian bubble all of our expenses are about us being happy all of our finance is poured into us to make us feel comfortable where the radic mentality is that we give out beyond ourselves god intends the local church to have a radic mentality not a centric mentality his heartbeat is for the world. Whilst he loves us and cares for us, we have a responsibility to continue to be ambassadors for Christ. It should always be, we should always be, sending out, giving out and visiting. And we should continue to do that as much as we can with every opportunity that comes our way. If we continually give out, then we will not lose out. And that's actually a biblical principle. The biblical principle of sowing and reaping. And I want to share this last thought with you. And if you don't get anything else out of this morning, what I've shared, and I've glossed over a whole lot. But missions is not what we do, 
It is who we are. That's what God called us to do. He's called us to fulfill and to passionately pursue the Great Commission, locally, nationally and internationally. And that's why we do missions. That's why we give. That's why we don't spend a whole lot of money on all the bells and whistles for our facility. We do our best. We try to be diligent and only spend what we have to and, 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 and enjoy what we have and bless those that have gone before us to give us this facility. Because we want to have funds that we can be a blessing to those beyond us. Because we have been blessed to be a blessing. And missions is not just something that we do. It's not just a program. It's who we are because we're called to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Wherever we are as a church. So as Tennant Creek Christian Family Church and as the Jordan Ministry, together as we come, together as one, we can minister to the regions around about us and be so much more effective with the penetration of the gospel of Jesus Christ for the extension of God's kingdom so that we can fulfill the Great Commission by going into all the world locally, around us, nationally around us and to the other countries around us as well. That's why we do missions. And that's what we celebrate today on Mission Sunday. You can look at our Sturt Street News and you can look at the back of that and you can see all the various people that we support. I encourage you to continue to give towards our missions ministry because it's who we are. Father, I commend these words to you today. I pray for those that are listening to my voice and that are not well, that are sick today. I pray that you would touch them afresh with your healing touch. Minister your divine healing to them, I pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for our, our, our missions involvement here, locally, nationally, and Lord, also internationally. We ask that you would continue to provide. Lord, wherever you guide us, you will also provide for us. Lord, we know this is your heartbeat. Father, we commend these words to you now. In your mighty name we pray. And all God's good-looking people said, that's right, amen. I'm going to leave you now. We're going to ask Bruce and the team to come back and they're going to finish off with a song. God bless you and we'll see you next week at our Mother's Day service. Bless you heaps. This is our prayer this morning on Mission Sunday. That we take up our cross and that we follow Jesus just as he's commanded us to do. Because he's called us out to the highways and the byways to preach the good news.
I'm a father.